You told a story a while back. This was well over a year ago. And I think it was involved with the Compton compilation. But if my mind serves me correct, it was involving MCH people and someone came to your studio, took your keyboard or something like that, and they went to retrieve it in the Inland Empire. Right, right. We, uh, tell, t- I, tell that story again. And what was that? The, was that the Compton compilation? Yeah, yeah, the Compton compilation. Okay. Um, Who was involved in that project just before you even start this, this just, story? I'm, Who was all kind of involved? Wanted Chuck Small, uh, Mike T, uh, uh, CMW. That was their first project. Uh, t- it was produced by Big DJ Slip, uh, Master Rhyme, Battery Brain, um, uh, DJ, I mean, not DJ Quick, MC, M, uh, MC Quick, not DJ Quick, hmm. MC Quick. Damn, there was an MC Quick? It was a, no, yeah, it was Quick. It was called Quick. He, was, he, he wasn't a DJ Quick. There was a lot of controversy around that time. Um, yeah. Battery Brain, the Twins, um, uh, two, they, they, the Twins are two short cousins. And, okay. Uh, uh, PG-13, like I can remember, uh, at that time, Rick Rock and Jolly Joe. Thank you, Rick Rock and Jolly Joe. Right, 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 right. So yeah, that's that's pretty much um, that's quicksand. Quicksand. Thank you, thank you. That's quick something. Yeah. I oh, okay, so it's quicksand. Quicksand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, damn, y'all got better memories than I do on my own shit. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that some shit? <laughs> but yeah, no. Talk to me about that. Let's talk about that story. It's been a while. You got some new subscribers who probably haven't heard it. The story of when they had to go retrieve. The keyboard that was stolen from you. Uh, actually, he stole my whole damn thing. That stole my whole studio. Oh damn! Okay. I um, I just I cut a deal with a producer to work in my studio. I, I, I do that a lot. I've done that a lot. I've always had the studio, and I don't have time to sit here and make music all day long. So I usually take, I'm out in the street. So I let the producer come in and say, "Hey man, I'm gonna come in. I wanna yeah. I, I'll work your studio uh, for so many hours a day and make some music. Cool." So Slip came to me shortly after that and said, hey, man, I want to come in the studio and make some music, but I can only do it um, in the morning time, okay? Why well, give it a homeboy morning time? There wasn't nobody, but nobody paying no money. So I'm like, dude, let's just switch over. I want you to work in the evening. Slip going to work in the daytime. So cool. The day before they were supposed to slip, uh, switch over, I'm down there. I had company that night. I never forget. I had company. I heard some. I, I could hear people in my studio walking around all the time. And the next morning, Slip came in and said, Lonzo, where's this unit and that unit and this unit and that unit and this keyboard? I was like, this should be upstairs. He said, man, they should up here. I came upstairs, and sure enough, my rack was empty. And all my special effects, I had modules and stuff, all that shit was gone, okay? Mm. And I knew who took it. Well, no doubt in my, my mind who took it. And I, a um, dude named Vince, he was working for me at that time. Excuse me. And I said, um, I, I, I paged him. I said, Vince, where my stuff at? Oh, man, I borrowed it. I had, I got a gig in Arizona, and I borrowed it. You said it. I borrowed it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would let me use it, so I borrowed it for a couple of weeks. I'll bring it back. Nigga, that's called stealing. That's called stealing all day. <laughs> you ding dong. So I'm like, Arizona? So everybody is pissed. Everybody, they're supposed to start recording that day. Well, later that day, um, one of his girls called looking for him, and I told her what happened. She said, Vince ain't in Arizona. I just talked to Vince. He's in uh, Fontana. I said, who is he? So I might not have told you this part, but I sent one of my one of my cousins, my nephews over there, to uh, verify the equipment was there. My nephew acted like he wanted to, he called Vince up, and Vince was very gullible. Yeah, man, mm. come on by, come on by. So my nephew went by there. And sure enough, said, all your stuff was in, over in, in Fontana. So he came back and told me what happened. So I told the fellas what happened. Okay. So first, me and my partner went by to get the stuff. We go, we in the house, and they they, they got a full blown session. My shit is blinking and flashing and doing all kinds of shit. Man, and now it's about to get serious. All of a sudden, his girl come out the room with a with a gap. Y'all got to go right now. Hey, bitch, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay? Y'all got to go right now. I'm going to call the police. And she did. Call the police. We, we walk outside Fontana. There immediately. 
got my phone number, address, driver's license, blah, blah, blah. Told me it was a civil matter. They couldn't do nothing about it. Possession is not until the law. Woo, 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 woo. Okay. Vince is, he clowning. He clowning. He, he on the step. Wow. Clowning. I get the police. He got me jammed up. So he feeling pretty good like he got away with something. So I came back and told the fellas what happened. And they, they weren't taking no for an answer. You got the address? I said, yeah, man. He said, let's go back down and get your, get your shit. I said, dude, I can't go back to Fontana. They got my address and everything. Said, Come on, we're going to go down there. Let's show where it is. So they, they loaded a big white um, a couple of cats from CMW, Mike T, uh, a couple other cats. And uh, I was across the street. I gave them the address, the number, everything. I go across, I'm across, I'm watching everything. I guess I'm out. They inside the apartment building. I'm across the street. And one little skinny guy knocked on the door, and the rest of the guys just bogarted in. I didn't realize until later on this was a home invasion. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yep. I didn't realize this till later on this was a home invasion. <laughs> it's 30 years later, and the statute of limitations is up, so it's, now it's just, it's just a good story. But, but, you know, for a long time, I had to shit my ass up because I didn't realize what was happening. Anyway, they went in the house. Homeboy was gone, although his car was there. He, was, he wasn't there. All my stuff was gone. So these cats, out of frustration, walked out with microwave ovens, blenders, uh, uh, stole machine. some shit. They stole some shit. <laughs> and as they saw, they saw homeboy car. They put a brick or something through his windshield. Oh Jesus! I'm just racking up the crimes in my head, but keep going. So, <laughs> uh, we they leave, and while I'm on the ten freeway, uh, my my pager. This is all I got the pager now. My pager is blowing up. My pager is blowing up. So I finally pull over. And it's him crying. Oh, man, why y'all do me like that? Why do you <laughs> like that? Why we do you like that? Okay. And um, I don't want no problems. I don't want my stuff. I said, I don't want my stuff back. And this, 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 this is a two part story. Okay. So he called a mutual friend who had nothing to do with this to meet me in West Covina two days later to give me my stuff back. All I wanted back was my equipment. Okay. All he wanted back was his microwave oven and his blender <laughs> and machine and basic utilities for the house. Yeah. So me and me and his boy is mad. It was boy, his boy think I'm some kind of crazy ass gangster now. Man, I don't know why I'm in this. My boy got me in this shit. Man, loud with me and you cool. We ain't got no problem. Man, I want no problem. Yeah. Give me I don't give you this. I don't even want to be in this shit. But I don't, you know, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, uh he get he give me the stuff back. I get to the studio. Don't none of this shit work. I looked at, uh. looked at it. You can see where screws had been taken to loose. You open it up, and the microchips are gone. That's right. All the microchips are gone. Wow. Call this fool. I said, man, why are you playing games, <laughs> man? Oh man. Oh y'all, 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 y'all can pay for my window. Oh yeah. Okay. And I do. I'm sorry, but I, I sometimes I will spite my nose. I mean, I cut off my nose to spite my face. Man, y'all pay for me. I'm giving you shit. I'm not giving you no nothing. It's a playing game. So I had a guy out in North Hollywood that fixed all my equipment. I'd also turned homeboy on. He, this guy was a keyboard player. I turned homeboy who stole my stuff onto the same guy. Okay. So I take all my racks, equipment out there. Say, man, I had a break in. This guy stole all my stuff. Call Roland, Yamaha, whoever it may be. Find a much these chips. Call. I'm not giving him shit. Mm. I'm gonna call to get these chips replaced in my equipment. Stubborn, but fuck it. Fuck it. I'm not giving yep. him shit. Uh huh. So now I go drop it off in Hollywood. Say, man, give me about a week, and I gotta call and get the part numbers. Blah blah blah. Same day. Same day. I get a call from the white boy at the at the repair shop. He said, "Man, what's going on, Lonzo?" I said, "What? What you mean?" He says, "I just got a call from your boy, Vince, trying to sell me a bunch of chips that go on your machine." <laughs> so I said, um, "I said, uh, 
How much you? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, that's hilarious. Let me back up. He wanted three hundred dollars from me for my chip. He wanted okay. dollars from me for my chip. I want all my How much was he gonna sell him the homeboy for? Twenty dollars. Wow, mother, that's a nigga shit. That's a nigga shit. I say, man, how, how much he want to sell him to you for? Man, he said he want twenty dollars. <laughs> he said he he gonna give them to me, but he just need twenty dollars for some gas. I said, give him twenty dollars. Wow. And he said, I'm charging twenty bucks to put him in. So I got my stuff back. I got all my chips back. I got all my stuff back up and running. And here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part. I had nothing to do with this. Nothing whatsoever. One Sunday, I'm sitting at my house, and one of my nephews who uh, went, went over there the first time to verify the equipment, Uncle, what you doing? I said, I'm kicking back watching the game. What's happening, man? We're gonna, I'm going to stop by. Well, the same dude who stole my stuff had pissed off some more boys in San Bernardino. They got a truckload of his shit. Mm. Got a truckload of his shit. His emulator, like emulator yeah. keyboard. That was a bad drum, keyboard back in the day. Turntables, drum machine, everything. Okay, and I'm like, man, all we want to do is give us a thousand bucks. You have everything. Not first of all, I don't buy stolen shit. Okay, I don't need it. I called a slip, slip. Well, I called somebody else up, and they they took it. But then he called me crying, man. Nobody stole all my shit. I said, no shit. <laughs> so said, Karma's a motherfucker, ain't it? I said, Karma's a motherfucker, man. So that was the last I heard of that dude, man. So yeah, that's real. That's real talk. 